How's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. Now, settle down, get you something to drink, get you a snack. This is going to be a long episode. You see, i got a nice little stack of comics here. And what this is, this is Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers from Pacific Comics. And what this was is back in the 80s, the early, early 80s, Kirby had, you know, he left Marvel in the 70s. Whenever DC, you know, created the fourth world and the demon and revamped Sandman, it did, you know, some good work. The fourth world stuff's entertaining. I really enjoy his Sandman series. What I've read of his demon series is pretty good. Even his failure stuff, like the green team and shit like that, was entertaining. Well, he didn't want to go back to Marvel because his whole thing with Marvel was he didn't like that. Wherever he created, he didn't own it. And he wasn't getting compensated for it. So, this new company started Pacific Comics. They started off as a comic distribution company. They were based out of somewhere in California, if I remember right, Pacific. That makes sense. And they said they're going to start putting out comics. And the first thing, as far as I know, the first thing they put out was this, Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Now, this is not a full, not a full run here. I'm missing a couple issues here and there. But I got all these at my local comic shop out of the cheap bin. And you'll see why in a minute. Because these are not valuable comics. And these are not meant... When I pull them out of the badge, I'll say they're not meant, but they're in decent enough shape that they should have at least, you know, two bucks an issue. But there's a reason for that. But the guy sold them to me, and he actually said when I was playing, he's like, yeah, you're the one I figured in to buy these. Because most people in this comic shop, it's a, it's more of a gaming store or anything. So the people that do come in for comics, they're mostly picking up, you know, Marvel and DC, maybe a little image here and there, but stuff like this, people don't even remember this. And I'm a Jack Kirby fan. I'm lucky enough I got to meet the man about a year before he passed, and... It was the only two other comic creators that I wanted to meet that probably would have equaled meeting Kirby would be Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. And, you know, Mr. Ditko passed away this, earlier this year. Never got to meet him. He never did conventions. I understand why. Stan Lee never got to meet him. He just passed away as of recording a few days ago. Let's check this out. So we got new, exciting, original. In defense of our galaxy, Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Forces from Star Worlds clash on Earth. And this is why this Earl D. Lane guy wrote in every one of these fucking comics. 1st November 81, 1 2 I guess, I don't know why he was doing this shit. I guess the first one was when it was published, the second when he bought it. I don't know why the fucker did this shit. We got a nice little piece on Kirby there. And then we got, and it's a space story. The thing is, is in the later issues, it really gets connected to Kirby's fourth world stuff, which was in a way connected to Kirby's Thor stuff. So this is kind of the next chapter in Kirby's fourth world stuff, because, you know, he left DC canceled and he left before he could finish it. I mean, there is the Hunger Dogs graphic novel, but that really isn't the way he wanted to end it. And it's on regular paper. And as you can see, it's regular newsprint. The pages are starting to yell a little bit. The art is, you know, just typical Kirby. I like this. Full color, sight and action, bi monthly schedule, direct sales only, 32 pages, no ads. So a dollar in 1981 for a 32 page comic. Okay, 81 comics were 45, 50, 55 cents. So this is almost double the price, but you're getting no ads and you get 32 pages. And there's our lead, Captain Victory. And one thing about this is Captain Victory dies a lot in this series, and he just gets brought back. And you got all this great, weird Kirby tech. I love Kirby, the way he drew technology. Look at this shit. Just so, and look, the great Kirby words. Zeow, zree, wham, womp. And very, very psychedelic shit in this. And as far as I know, Kirby was not into drugs, as far as I know, like, you know, psychedelic drugs. I mean, everything I ever read, of Kirby's only vices was he smoked cigars and he might have drank. So, I like that you had a list of distributors and the retailers that carried them. And I'm going to go ahead and just look while I'm in here. Hey, Mississippi, Star, Store, and Books and Stuff in Jackson and Pearl. And for Alabama, it would be one in Huntsville. Okay, what about Louisiana? That's where I was going for comics back in the day. Nothing listening for Louisiana. Wow. And, of course, since it's Kirby, some of the characters look a lot like characters from other titles of his. And, you know, Kirby had a very distinctive style. Like, I mean, here without a shirt on, he looks like Commandy. You know, Captain Victory. 
and Master Mr. Mind, the little egg shaped guy that floats around as part of the crew. It was kind of Star Wars inspired, but also Kirby seemed to be picking up a lot on the 70s entrance and the interest in the ancient astronauts and stuff like that, you know, chariots of the gods and all that kind of shit. He seemed to be picking up on that and used it. It influenced his work a lot. I'm looking at the uh, holy shit, okay. This right here, the book standing part through Texas. That was my comic shop for a short while when I lived in Texas before I found Lynn's Comics, but that's back when the one was still in Portland. Great comic shop. Great, great, great comic. Not as good as Lynn's Comics, but great. And of course, it ends with Captain Victory on Earth and the Hive, the evil villains coming down. And look, we get like pages of the weapons. Like, look at this shit. The Baby H Bazooka, the Magnetic Mind Thrower, the Sun Gun, the Gang Jazzler. And all the troops, the characters, I mean, just such great stuff. And then like this, he puts his address in Lane Enterprises. And the guy, the impression I'm getting from this, this guy was an adult. And the way he's writing his dates, I'm assuming he was military. Because that's the way you do, I mean, in, you know, in the U.S. you do month, day, year. Military you do day, month, year. And I know if you were taught. You, know, you grew up in the U.S., I think in Canada it's the same way. You know, month, day, year is what you automatically think you think of even though day month year makes more sense look at this star slayer the log of the jolly roger full color side and natural ultra gloss cover by monthly schedule direct sales only 32 pages no this is mike grell series that was so damn good and look they're asking for letters for the next issue captain victory first issues of major publications have always been prized by collectors the comic you hold in your hand is more than just the first issue of an exciting new adventure series captain victory and the galactic rangers it is the first publication of a new comic publisher pacific comics we are planning on an ongoing schedule and will be here for years to come our initial publishing schedule is small in quantity one comic per month but cert certainly long on quality it is fitting in our premier titles of creation of Jack Kirby. Over the years, Kirby has fashioned the visual images of literal thousands of characters. In Captain Victory, he brought his years of experience and creative talents into play, breathing life into an, in a, into an innovative series as bold as tomorrow. We will be introducing another groundbreaking new series very soon, Star Slayer by Mike Grell. Each title will be published on a regular bi-monthly schedule and other big plans afoot as well. Watch for them. We love comics. It's our feeling there's not enough quality comic books being produced for the discriminating fan. We're marking our comments through the direct sales market only. This means they will probably not be found on regular newsstands, but mainly in specialty shops such as comic book and science fiction, book, science fiction bookstores. We have added a listing of many finalists that carry Captain Victory. If your favorite child is not listed, please send us their name and address. We hope you enjoy this project. It is for you. David Scroggy, editor. And Pacific went under not too long after the series kind of ended. But that's the first issue. Damn Earl D. Lane. But issue one. Now, I don't own issue two. Issue three is the next one I got. Like I said, I don't, it's not a full run. I'm only missing a few, and I need to get them. And I don't think, as far as I know, these have never been put out in a trade. They might have. I'm not 100% on it. I don't, I don't remember ever seeing a trade. What do we got here? To save our Earth, he dared to seize the Mother of Horrors in defense of our galaxy, Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Still in it all, Earl D. Lane, you fucked hard. Miss Mystic, Neil Adams' backup feature. First appearance of Miss Mystic, which was a Neil Adams' original creation that basically, after it, uh, issue two came out from Pacific, it never came out on time, it kind of jump-started continuity. Continuity comics from Neil Adams where you might wait a year and a half between issues. Almost as bad as Archie's horror line. Well, let's see here. And see, on the inside of this cover, we're getting... For the next issue, is that, yep, the next issue of Star, uh, Captain Victory and Star Slayer. And look, you can, add, you can subscribe. Six issues was five fifty for each one of them. The Insectons have landed on Earth. They are a ruthless, implacable force with the instinct to conquer. Each minute that passes bears grim new evidence of their plan to stay. But win or lose, we are not without Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Encounters of a Savage Kind. Created, written, and drawn by Jack Kirby. Inked and lettered by Michael Thibodeau. And it's just, this is them trying to figure out how to deal with these insect aliens that have invaded Earth. Look at all this fucking tech, man. I love this shit. And I had these for quite a while. I read them. And it's earlier this year, maybe late last year. I think it was early. I sat down and over the course of like two or three days read every one of these. And it was, it's, Kirby, I'll, put, I'll give Kirby, Kirby was a great idea guy. 
He's not the best at dialogue and taking those ideas and fleshing them out to a full story. He's not the best at, but it's entertaining. The energy is there. He's got this wild energy. I love this character. She reminds me of Medusa from Fantastic Four, which, you know, Kirby Creation. And Kirby Monster. Zam! Zam! Pow, pow! Then we got the letter page, which is what? One, two, TM Maple. The Mad Maple. Uh, infamous letter hack. Used to send letters as the Mad Maple, and then either Marvel or DC said they were not going to publish any letters with people using a pen name, so he just started calling himself TM Maple. I don't know if the guy's even still around, to be honest. Um, I just remember seeing that name a lot. He was one of the, you know, like Augie D. Black and all them, the letter hacks. But yeah, nice art, and then we, of course, it ends with... They only mean one thing, the fighting airborne. And then we get Miss Mystic, and this is some fucking great. Coming in 1982, and this is just basically the first few pages of the Miss Mystic comic, which was like an anti-pollution book. And Star Slayer issue two, Star Slayer so damn. I need to do that one time. Let this back cover. Right, what's the next issue we got here? This is issue number four. Okay, so. Let's see here. They never fought invaders from space, but they wouldn't stop fighting. Stop. But that wouldn't stop the fighting airborne in defense of our galaxy. Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Start talking, spaceman. What is this place? The place of a powerful and undaunted enemy. What the captain means is that they're, ex they're experts, e experts at inflicting sudden death. Kirby back a feature. Are you ready for this? Goozlebobber. Okay. Still a dollar. And look, Miss Mystic issue one, which one of the first non-Marvel DC Archie Gold Key, because I know Archie and Gold Key are kind of independent publishers, but to me, they were, you know, you can find them on newsstands. One of the first true indie books I picked up was a Miss Mystic. I don't know if it was a specific issue or if it was uh, continuity. I'm not sure on that. I had an uncle just take me to the comic shop every once in a while, and I got that. that rawr. He looks kind of like, um, God, what is the guy? He reminds me of the guy from uh, Eternals, the lead from that. Icarus, Icarus. Take my name. I'm not sure. I cannot remember the guy's name anymore. Steve Olive is doing the, look at this, man. Double page spread. Just some fucking great Kirby artwork. I wish I'd had these when I met Derek Kirby and got them signed. <laughs> I didn't have them back then because back then these were actually, especially at first, it was like an $8 comic and I didn't like spending that much. I'm kind of picky about spending way, way, way more than cover for most comic. Especially stuff like this where I know it's not rare. And it's not really in high demand. Now, they have brought the uh, Dynamite. The company Dynamite has brought back Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers and tried doing a kind of Kirby-verse space around. It's called Kirby Genesis. I don't think much was done with it. And if I remember right, in the uh, Topps comics, and their Secret City Saga, which was their Kirby-verse. I want to say Captain Victory shows up in that. I'm not sure, because I don't own every issue of the Topps Kirby-verse. I got most of them. And it's kind of weird as a kid. I hated Kirby, and I hated Ditko. And then quickly, I got into Ditko. And I still didn't like Kirby. I thought his art looked weird. And now, Kirby is probably... He's probably my top five artist. Ditko's ranked higher, but... More letters than anybody. Mike Barron. Ah, Mike Barron from Nexus. And they're, they throw out a plug. Hey, thanks, Mike. Here, hereby recommended you check out Nexus at the direct sales outlet that carry Captain Victor. Nexus was being published by Capital probably by then. Ugh. And of course, you know, the ads are $5.50. That's not bad. It's really cool Kirby artwork. And you know, this shows you how all these are lots of panels. Panel borders. You don't see that anymore. And like I said, this really feels like the stuff Kirby did with the Norse gods and Thor mixed with the stuff he did with uh, 
the fourth world mixed with the Eternals, mixed with ancient astronauts, mixed with Star Wars. He just kind of took all this shit and mixed it all together in a pot, like a big old pot of gumbo, and we get Captain Victory. Look at that shit. Look at that. Just so kick-ass. Next issue, our backs to the wall. And now for a special King Kirby treat, a surprise spin-up that you want to follow in every issue. The Goozle Bobber. Even as all eyes are riveted upon the motion charge field of action, little attention is given to the lesser places in the galaxy dreadnought tiger. Who, in this moment of crisis, would give a second thought to a life form like the Goozle Bobber? And just a little side story about the Goozle Bobber. And I don't remember if this appears again or not. There's the Goozle Bobber! You can bet your Rudy Toot Tooties I'm a real alien. Rudy Toot Tooties! That should be a rallying cry for something. Fuck it. Earl D. Lane. Lane Enterprises. EDL Entertainment. You know what EDL? E-A-D. Eat a fucking dick. Well, eat a dick. E-A-F-D would be eat a fucking dick. More Star Slayer. So the Star Slayer stuff, you got it here, and then it went over to First Comics, but if you look around, Valiant through their Windjammer or Armada imprint, one of those, reprinted all the old Star Slayer stuff. I think they touched up the art and stuff. Okay. Major Clavis, Executive Officer of the Dreadnoughts Tiger Tri-Command. Like I said, really cool stuff. Now, this is issue... Okay, that was issue what? Four. Okay, I'm not missing another issue. This is issue six. Has this actually got tape? Or is this one of them stupid... Oh, God, I hate these. Them stupid... Bags that seal themselves. I do not like these. All right, let's see here. Jumbo, 48-page issue, but it's only a dollar. If Marvel or DC had done this back, they'd be like, motherfuckers, you're paying $2, and we're going to put some ads in there. And we're going to count the ads apart. In defense of our galaxy, Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. Whether fighting for planets or peanuts, victory is sacrifice. Why would they be fighting for peanuts? The only person that fights for peanuts... And the only does it in movies is, you know, the Loco Lobo Barry Wolf. Shout out to you, Mr. Wolf. Look at this. First issue, the readers said more, and so Pacific presents The Rocketeer by Dave Stevens. R.I.P. Mr. Stevens, such a great series. And Steve Ditko's The Missing Man. Two big features, 32 pages. Now, this is from September of 82. When the time is desperate, the enemy still powerful and resolute. The fighting is at its bloodiest. A galactic commander must decide to win and die. Captain Victory in the Galactic Range in his Galactic Rangers in Victory is Sacrifice. And these really feel like, to me, they really feel like eh, night late 60s era Marvel. But written for a slightly older audience. And there's nothing in here like a kid couldn't read. I mean. I don't know how many kids would be in this. The art would probably turn them off. I don't know. They might be. I have to test that out. Look at this. Just such great artwork. Such a cool little series. Well, he's missing an eye. Kind of like Odin and his and Kirby's Thor run. And then he gets in this suit. That shit happens. Just so, so fucking, oh man. I'm wanting to reread this right now. I'm wanting to just hit pause, sit down and reread all these and come back and be like, hey, I just reread them, motherfuckers. Uh, coming fast, coming mean, you won't believe the Galactic Files on the Wonder Warriors. Watch for them in the next issue of Captain Victory. And we got this guy and this person and this one and this one. Also on its way, the new mind-blowing Kirby concept for which you've been waiting, inquiring, demanding, and what can we do? We'll deliver. Watch for it. Okay, I wonder what it is. Um, maybe Silver Star? I mean, there was like a Silver Star book. I know that came back in the Topps Kirby verse. And we get some more letters. Um, nobody names I, rec I recognize. And see, this is only offering a subscription to Captain Victory here. So maybe Star Slayer was over by then? And of course, oh, San Diego Comic Con 1982. Man, it was probably extremely cheap to go. Oh, well, the hotel rooms are cheap. A single's only 37 bucks, a double's 42, and a triple's 47. Is that the hotel room or is that the days? I can't really read it.
That's a hotel. All right, we got another Kuzo Bobber story, which I remember these being eh. I kind of wish we got more, you know, Captain Victory, but. All right, coming soon, an era when men were men, women were women, and lizards were lizards. One hero stood alone. He was a nomad, a champion who roamed from town to town. This was mainly because no one wanted him to stick around. Now at last, Sergio Aragones presents the epic tale of Gru the Wanderer. Gru started at Pacific, as far as I know. He was a backup in, was it Star Slayer? One of the Star Slayer issues? Another great series I never hear talk about now. Starting in Pacific Comics. It's too late to run and hide. He's changing. Soon you'll find yourself facing the missing man by Steve Ditko. Oh, a Star Slayer ad with the subscriptions. So Star Slayer is still coming out. Then we get the missing man story from Steve Ditko. Mark Evanier does the dialogue. Steve Olaf does the uh, coloring. And Steve Ditko does the art and the story. And of course, it's, just look at that. Ditko art is very easy. Once you know... What to look for. Dick Hard is so easy to spot. Such a great artist. Very. I'll give him this. He stuck by what he believed in. I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff, but he stuck by his beliefs. So, you know, I got to give him, you know, props for that. Dude. Oh, coming soon. Queen Bee is her name and it means trouble for the missing man. Another Grew the Wanderer ad. Biggest news of 1982, Miss Mystic. All new, all atoms, bi-monthly, full color, origin issue dump. Dynamic action, direct sales only, first issue collector's item, on sale, made June. Subscribe today, don't miss this comic art milestone. One year, six issues, 550. Well, as far as I know, I think maybe two issues came out for Pacific and they didn't come out on time. And even hell, even from continuity, I don't think more than six or seven issues came out. Watch these exciting comics coming from Pacific Comics. Star Slayer, The Log of the Jolly Roger, Issue 4. And Miss Mystic, Missing Man, Rocketeer, Grew the Wander. Okay, we got more letter pages. Pacific Comics Reader Survey. And stuff like where did your purchase is coming, how many comics you buy each month. How many of these, how many are from Marvel, Archie, Harvey, DC, Eclipse, Whitman, Pacific, Charlton, Independent, Underground. Five favorite comics. What do you like best about this comic? What do you like least? Who would you like to see writing for Pacific? Does anyone besides yourself did any does anyone besides yourself read your copy of Captain Victory? Would you say would you like to see a new Kirby title? Whom would you like to see drawn for Pacific Comics and all this stuff? And then we get the back page. Once again, a memory storage unit will activate a clone and Captain Victory will live once more. The special man goes on to be seen again and again for he is the best part of ourselves. And that must live until it becomes all of what we are and very rare that we are all special. So be sharp and listen. Look for the door where the cosmos is waiting to show you so much more. Jack Kirby. You have the victory down. They just cloned the motherfucker. Yeah. Issue seven. I think I'm going to break this up into two videos at least because I'm hitting. This is running long. These are so, so, so good. Here we go. This is issue seven. That last one, was that last one six? Yes, it was. Something as large as, as a galaxy it opens like a giant cosmic eye and produces the terrors known as the Wonder Warriors in defense of our galaxy. Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers. And there's some of the characters that are like different colors, but they're there. Issue seven, still only a dollar. We bore him, we raised him, but he can do things we can. He dreams in ways we can't. He is becoming what we can never be. If there are more like him, we may once again be forced to redefine the word mankind. Look for Jack Kirby's wildest new concept, the man who is bound to happen. He is a natural. New beginning, our terrifying, unexpected, and silver star is coming. That was, I don't know how many issues came out from Pacific, but it, there is at least one issue of silver star from... Tops comics, and I know Dynamite put out at least an issue. What is the Earth but another planet amongst billions of others in the vast cosmos? What is the Earth but another witness to the strange but effective ways of Captain Victory and his Galactic Rangers? And now enter Quadrant X and apprehend the Wonder Warriors. Just... Look at that. It's like I said, gorgeous artwork. I know I'm going to repeat myself, but it's just, oh. When I got these, the first thing I did was sit down and just flip through them and look at the arts. Like, oh, this stuff is so, so good. And I'm really surprised with, you know, Kirby's popularity, you know. He's, he's still, you know, 
Even people just getting into comics since he died know who Kirby is. These have not, as far as I know, these have not been reprinted. That's kind of surprising. You figured it'd be a trade or something? Okay, we got a letters page again. And doesn't look like there's anybody. Yeah, I say nobody I recognize the name, so. Mm, fucking early Lane writing his fucking name on those pages again. And then we got, of course, what the hell? How can you blame us for trying to learn all we can? Then, but how can one blame the Galactics for attending to other pressing duties? However, if diplomacy can't solve this, there's an option that will shrink your Levi's. Zap out. Next. Now this... Was this... That's crap. There's a sun named Antares, which is so large that it is said one can place 90 versions of our sun on the surface of this giant star. Yet life could exist in proximity to this overwhelming light and heat and is once proven... It was once proven by young ranger recruit Martinus Clavis. Taped in the Scorponus constellation upon his request for ranger enlistment. That's a backstory to one of the members of the crew. A little short story. And then we get an ad for probably outside of Rocketeer. Nowadays the best known, well, to me at least, best known. Twisted Tales, which was a horror anthology series that caught a lot of shit for a couple of stories they published and then we get this back full page art here all right you know what i'm gonna end this one here but next issue next one will be issue eight i'll start from there so hope you enjoyed this if you did leave me a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe all the other bullshit talk to everybody later bye bye